So thank you so much to the Africa Center for Strategic Studies for inviting me uh, to this program. And I see some of my former bosses in here. Um, thank you very much. And I see General Aguay, and I swear, General, I'm not following you. We're just in England a uh, few months ago, two months ago together. But I'm grateful for um, the foundation that both the former directors and General Aguay have set um, for this discussion. I was asked to speak to the issue of strategic leadership, why it matters to Africa, particularly its importance to Africa's quest for su sustainable uh, security. And I'll focus mostly on the governance side of things. In doing so, let me just very quickly capture some of the really good points that um, General Aguay talked about in terms of the core characteristics of strategic leadership. One, it requires long-term vision. Two, it requires the ability to establish the goals that underpin that long-term vision. Three, it requires the ability to develop a strategy to, uh, to achieve your desired end goals. Because after all, a vision without a plan to achieve it will remain just that, a vision. Four, strategic plans, at least the most successful ones, are often developed through an inclusive process that involves key stakeholders. You obtain input, feedback, buy-in, as well as ownership of the vision that you are articulating. Five, strategic leadership requires the ability to interrogate the key factors that stand in the way or the key factors that threaten that vision. It requires the ability to identify the tools and resources needed to achieve the vision that you've articulated. It requires the ability to identify the opportunities that exist for you to achieve your vision. Six, a successful strategic plan requires the mobilization of the resources, not just money, but also the people and all other resources that are necessary to implement and, and to implement the plan. Six, and I'm glad uh, General Aguay talked about this, that strategic leadership is dynamic and adaptable so that you're always aware of the changing environment in which you operate. Good strategic leaders have strong analytical and critical thinking skills, and they're able to make the adjustments necessary to achieve their goals. And then finally, the point that um, General Aguay ended with is an important one from my perspective, that strategic leadership requires the, creating, the creation of enabling and empowering environments for your people and your teams so that they have ownership, that they can make decisions, and they can implement towards the desired end goals. That strategic leadership is accountable and transparent. So those are some of the key um, characteristics of strategic leadership. Let me now turn to how this plays out in an African context from uh, my perspective. But as Dr. Gilpin and uh, General Aguay said earlier on, strategic leadership and thinking are not alien to Africa. They are embedded in Africa's history at various levels. But we're here today talking about strategic leadership because something is clearly not right and clearly not working as well as it could be on the African continent. So you bear with me if I don't talk about some of those historical um, the, the, the strong history of strategic leadership that is replete across the continent. Because I want to focus on the here and now today and the future going forward. We can tap into that strong history. But the fact that I'm going to focus on what's not working right does not mean that that history is not important and it doesn't mean that that history uh, should be put to the wayside. So please forgive me because I'm going to focus on that which is not working. 
I don't think there's a person in this room who does not have the vision for what a secure Africa looks like. We could go around this room and each of you will be able to define what a secure Africa looks like. And I can argue that that secure Africa would have so many similarities across this room. I don't doubt at all that we're all pushing for the same thing. But can we have an honest discussion about the gap between the Africa that we envision and the Africa that is today? Is Africa secure? No, it isn't. The gap between the vision and where Africa today, for me, is all about strategic leadership or lack thereof. That's why we're meeting here in Washington for the next three weeks. A big part of that for me, and I'm going to uh, highlight some of the disconnect that I see. Number one, one of the biggest disconnects from my perspective has to do with the fact that the predominant culture and definition of leadership at the highest level is out of sync with the attributes and characteristics of strategic leadership. That those in whom we have placed the mandate of strategic leadership on the continent at the very highest level, have failed to live up to that expectation. We have corrupted our definition of leadership. So that leadership is all about the trappings of power. It is all about the symbolism of power. It is all about the access that you can get for yourself rather than to do for your people. So we need to revisit how we break this paradigm of the prevailing definition of leadership that's costing the continent so much. So that's point number one. The second point that I would point to in terms of the disconnect between the vision and the reality when it comes to a secure Africa has to do with improperly or inadequately defined goals. If our goal is for a, secure, for a secure continent, then how we define security matters tremendously. Unfortunately, for too long, our definition of security on the continent has centered around territorial integrity. It has centered against, uh, around preventing conflict or managing conflict. It has centered around securing the security of the regime. What it has failed to speak to very directly is the security of the people living in the borders. Okay? And I'm not talking about the well-off people, the part and parcel of the people living in the borders, within the borders. I'm talking about the ordinary Africans in the villages. I'm talking about the ordinary Africans in the shanty compounds that litter our continent. I'm talking about the millions of Africans who are caught up in refugee camps for year upon year, and we're getting into a point of generation upon generation. It's their security that ought to be the starting point of how we define security. If you do not define security accurately, no matter how good your strategic plan is, you will not achieve the sustainable security that you are looking for. So that's point number two. The third disconnect that I see that's impacting our ability to arrive at sustainable security has to do with our failure to properly analyze and address the threats to that vision of a secure Africa. 
General Agua, I talked about the fact that most of the threats that are evident in Africa today come from within. When you look at conflict in Africa, it has changed. It's no longer conflict between states. Most of the insecurity is intrastate. And yet, when you look at the peace and security architecture that we have put in place, it fails to adequately focus on the key area that causes that insecurity, poor governance. It is part of the security architecture, but it is not robust enough. So we let leaders get away with causing insecurity, with fomenting conflict. We let them hide under the cover of national sovereignty. You cannot have security until we figure out how to get to the real source of the threat that threaten the security of most Africans on the continent today. So that's disconnect number three. And I swear I only have three more disconnects, then I'll sit down. <laughs> The fourth disconnect for me has to do with resourcing security. Africa has struggled to find the resources that it needs to properly and sufficiently resource its security. You cannot have a plan, a strategic plan, and not find the resources to make it come alive. We have signed on to numerous plans, and yet we always struggle with finding the resources. Africa has plenty of resources. Plenty of resources. So let's not start with this, let's go ask our international partners. You cannot fund your security with someone else's resources. It's not real security. It will not last. You will not be able to sustain it. We have plenty of resources on that continent. Let's figure out how we tap into them and bring them to bear for the benefit of security for ordinary Africans across the continent. The fifth disconnect and I'm going to be a little bit lost here. I'm probably not going to articulate this as, as well as I once should, but I have people here who will save me, so I'm going for it. The fifth disconnect that I see is Africa's inability to understand the global environment in which it is situated. the changes that are taking place in that global uh, environment, and how those changes and the interactions with various uh, global actors are going to influence Africa's quest for sustainable peace. We have more than seven um, military bases that have opened up on the continent in the last three years. We have the Chinese who have been taking a very active engagement in Africa's economic space. The Turks are also out there. Lots of other actors as well. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. What I'm not seeing is an analysis of what is Africa's strategic interest in terms of its engagement with all of these actors. And what does this mean for Africa's long-term vision for sustainable security on the African continent. You also have internationally, globally, a lot of countries that are now more inward looking. Nationalism has taken root in so many other uh, parts of the world. What are the implications for where Africa is in all of this? I don't know what the answer is. I just raised questions, so please don't ask me the questions. But let me conclude with a final point. So I, I've raised issues uh, that you all need to look like to look at. 
I've really looked at this big picture, the national level, the continental level, the global level. But as General Agwai said, strategic leadership is required at all levels. And as I look across the room here, I want to conclude by reminding all of you that Africa's biggest and best strategic resource is all of you. We haven't always utilized that well. That's number one. 25 years from now, or even 20 years from now, I hope your children and your grandchildren are not going to be having the discussion that we're having today. That that discussion will be a totally different discussion of where Africa is sitting at the table about the security of ordinary African citizens. I believe it can be done. And you all are at the forefront of that struggle. I have more gray hairs than most of you, so I'll be out of the picture soon. But all of you can carry that torch forward. So I thank you for listening, and I look forward to engaging with you.